Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church in Poughkeepsie, New York, and our virtual worship series. This video is for Sunday, October 24th, 2021, which is the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, thank you for tuning in this morning. We're glad you've joined us for this short worship service. Hope you had a peaceful and, and healthy week. And, um, well, let's frame our hearts and minds before God as we get ready to worship today. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So the gospel for this morning is from the 10th chapter of Mark, beginning at the 46th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So today's gospel is actually um, a little bit crazier than it sounds when you first read this through. There's a whole lot going on. So let's look at that picture again really quick. So Jesus is leaving Jericho, we're told, which means he's on the way to Jerusalem. There's a frenzy of followers all around him. His ministry is ramping up. He's immensely popular. He's a celebrity. Palm Sunday is just around the corner from this moment. And this account in Mark is basically the last healing Jesus pe performs before the Last Supper. So now you can sort of imagine that picture going on. But what I don't really understand about this gospel is, you know, Jesus mostly became such an influencer because of the healing and resurrection of Lazarus. So... Don't you think the crowds would eat up a photo op like this for Jesus to heal a blind person, like right there in public? But no, that's not what happens at all. In fact, the opposite happens. Why would the crowd not only ignore, but actively try to suppress this miraculous moment? Well, because, because Jesus is a celebrity. He is important. I mean, way too important for the commoners, especially for this guy, the smallest fish in the pond, a simple blind sinner. I mean, beggar. Of course, isn't that why he's blind in the first place? Because he sinned? I mean, that's what they would have believed for sure in that moment. So yeah, Jesus, the celebrity, doesn't have time for sinners. He's got more important work to do. Now, I don't know about you, but... Oftentimes, um, I'll find myself thinking, well, God probably doesn't have time, you know, for me and my tiny little problems compared to all the big fish that he has to fry. So sometimes they feel even a little guilty praying. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's not the problem here, really. The problem here is that people who are claiming to be his followers are now dictating what Jesus should or should not do. They own him in their minds. But even worse, they are the ones who think they know what his ministry and mission 
should look like right now. <laughs> right. So anyway, it, you know, it'd be one thing if Bartimaeus sitting there among the crowds, right, would have thought to himself, Jesus won't have time for me, so I won't even, I won't even bother. And then he would silence himself, you know. But hey, thank God that's not what happens. In fact, Bartimaeus does the opposite of what we might expect. He does the opposite of guilt. He does the opposite of peer pressure. When they yell at him and tell him to give it up, he turns it up. <laughs> it's pretty cool. You know, wouldn't you sometimes kind of like to be more like like Bart sometimes, you know, and, and be unafraid to yell out Jesus' name in a world that would really rather not hear about it? <laughs> ah, yeah. There's another thing that Bartimaeus does, though, that I wish we could all do. He throws off his cloak when he gets up to go to Jesus. And specifically, Mark knows he tosses his cloak and he runs up to Jesus. Now, that's significant because for a guy like Bartimaeus, a poor and blind beggar, his cloak was probably the most important and very likely the only property that he owned. See, his cloak was his clothing, but it was also his shelter. He would use it as, at night as a tent. And think about it, because Bartimaeus is blind, if he gets up, goes to Jesus, and Jesus rejects him, he very well might not find that cloak again, you know? Especially judging by the way the crowd is treating him already, how nice are they going to be? But you know what? Bartimaeus didn't care. Um, he just abandoned everything of value to him without hesitation. That's incredible. Can we do that? But hey, enough about Barnabas, because you know what's the coolest part of this whole gospel for me? And that is, Jesus ignored everyone. Through all this frenzy, all this excitement, all this procession, all this momentum, all this celebrity came to a grinding halt. Verse 49, Jesus stood still. <laughs> because... Bartimaeus was important to Jesus. So, there it is, the bottom line. Jesus stopped. It doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what your friends say. It doesn't matter what all the followers say. It doesn't matter how busy Jesus is or how important he is or how unimportant or undeserving you think you are or whether your little moment of need fits into some great divine plan or not. He will stop for you. Jesus is never too busy for you. So, don't follow the crowds. Wherever it is you're going, in the bustle of your week out there in that world, take a moment, stop for someone else. Because right there, you might also find Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Stop. Take a moment. Share that peace with each other. Somebody outside. Let them know that God is never too busy for them. So gathered into one by that amazing Holy Spirit, which stops to care for you. Let us now boldly pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon each one of you and grant you peace. Amen. Hey, and remember, you are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us this morning. And we hope that you have a, a blessed and peaceful and productive and stopping and restful week. Help someone along the way. God bless you all. See you right here next week.